It was a day of big breaking news. We began with better than expected jobs report and then President Obama pulls the plug on Keystone and the mainstream media attempts to knock out Ben Carson. However, Carson just responded to the accusations that he fabricated his personal history to Bill O'Reilly. You were never formally offered um, any kind of accommodation at West Point, is that correct? Right, I was just told that it would be very easy for me. Okay, so that should have been a little clearer on page 57 of your book, correct? Uh, I guess you could have, it could have been more clarified. I, I told it as I understood it. And that was uh, Dr. Ben Carson responding to the West Point controversy with Bill O'Reilly. To watch that entire interview, tune in to The O'Reilly Factor tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Fox News Channel. Now, earlier today, of course, this all began when Politico came out with a bombshell report claiming that Dr. Ben Carson admitted he lied about his West Point scholarship. But Carson's campaign says that the story itself from a political is an outright lie and that the campaign never admitted to anything. Today's accusation coming just the day after CNN blasted Dr. Carson, claiming that some of his childhood stories are fabricated. This was his response on the Kelly file last night. None of those people decided that they wanted to do this, and the media is ruthless. So, you know, I would say to the people of America, do you think I'm a pathological liar like CNN does, or do you think I'm an honest person? Uh, and I'm going to leave that up to the American people to make that decision. All right, so how will this impact Dr. Carson? Joining me now, Ebony Williams, a Fox News contributor, David McIntosh, Club for Growth president, Katrina Pearson, she's the Tea Party Leadership Fund spokesperson, and Charlie Gasparino, Fox Business senior correspondent on the phone. Charlie, I'll start with you. Uh, you you've, you've looked into this very deeply all day long. Where do we stand now? Well, um, you know, this story keeps morphing as we speak. Um, you know, uh, okay, he didn't apply to... Um, to, uh, to West Point, but he says he was asked to apply, and he never said he applied. Uh, but, you know, I think this is where the rubber's going to meet the road with, with Dr. Carson. And I think if, if, this, and if it turns out that he did not meet ever with General Westmoreland, and I'm pretty sure you can verify that they met at some point, uh, if that turned out to be untrue, you know, he's got a credibility problem. If he did meet with General Westmoreland, I am telling you, I know for a fact that the general could pull a string or two. He was, he was the, the general at the time. And, uh, and Ben Carson, given the fact that he got into Yale, would have got into West Point. No doubt about it. it sounds, that sounds plausible. The problem, I, I think, that we just don't know is whether he really met with Westmoreland. On the dates that he said he met with Westmoreland, that he was in town for a banquet, I think he said it was like Labor Day, 1969. Check, check those, that, those yeah. exact dates. But Westmoreland's uh, you know, itinerary shows that he wasn't even near Detroit. Now, I know Rush Limbaugh earlier today, I picked this up on Twitter, said that Westmoreland was in Detroit maybe a couple months earlier. Maybe he's conflating the two, debate, two dates. We don't know. But here's the thing. If he actually met with Westmoreland, this thing will go away. Katrina Pearson, uh, he was the top ROTC student in Detroit. Uh, it was at a time when the, uh, when the military really was trying to woo a lot of black young men into the military, particularly in officer position. So just how far-fetched would it be that uh, someone would have told him, hey, if you want to get into West Point, it's a done deal? Well, maybe that part isn't far-fetched. I think the question is, what did he write in his book? Did he embellish a little bit? Because even a little embellishment kind of gives him a credibility issue, considering the, the large investigative piece that CNN put out. Well, I mean, there never, really is a lot of cracks in his story. He never said he applied to West Point in his book. I, I mean, I read the passage three times. He said he was offered a scholarship. Uh, it is very possible, as a 17-year-old young man sitting there with Westmoreland, and let's, let's take him for his word for it, that he met with West, General Westmoreland, who was, remember, General Westmoreland led the, the, the Vietnam, he was the top general in the Vietnam War. I mean, this was not, right. this wasn't some schmuck. I mean, he had Paul. He met with Westmoreland, and two people from West Point, he said, were at this banquet. It is very possible that those people said to him, listen, you want to come in? You could come in. We all know that. And, deal. and, a and lot, by the way, a, this is a Yale. This is the guy that went to Yale. Oh, he yeah, no, there's, there. there's no doubt. Again, he was the top student in the entire city yeah. of Detroit, ROTC. And also, here's another thing. A lot is being made about the fact that West Point doesn't, uh, doesn't offer full scholarships. But I want you guys at home to take a Go look at this. Free. Right, right. This is an ad, though. This is a West Point well, ad. The government pays. I'm, I'm going to show you guys right now West Point ad, and this is what it says. Each year, about 1,200 young men and women take advantage of the opportunities to attend West Point on a 
full government yes. scholarship, of course. which includes tuition, room, board, medical, dental care, and annual salary. By the way, this ad appeared in Black Enterprise in December of 1992. Of course, so, Charles, they, they, what they're nailing him on is semantics, but here is where it gets. I mean, let me tell you something. He, if he met with Westmoreland, this goes away. If he didn't West meet with Westmoreland, he's got a problem. Let me bring and that's in, let, essentially where it comes down. Let me bring in Ebony Williams because you've been you've been wanting to get in here. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Yeah, here's the thing. Katrina says something important. Charlie made a lot of good points. It's about credibility. Ultimately, the American people are going to judge Dr. Carson. I say not on the letter of what he said. I think he, you know, O'Reilly successfully impeached him on his statement. It was indeed a lie on its face. It but the spirit, a lie. but the spirit of Lies what Dr. Hart was not a lie. Lies are hard that word. Was not a lie. Hey, 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 never said he lied. Yes, he, well, listen. No, no, listen to on. me, Charlie. He the spirit... One second, guys. Let, 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 let me get past that. the point. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether or not it's a lie or not. It's the, really the point here. The spirit of what he understood it to be is what's going to be important. Of course. And that's what Dr. Carson was successful in combating it with. He says, look, I came from a poor family too, Charles. The, the words full scholarship, it's like Christmas. Well, you tell we me light I'm going to interpret it as a scholarship. Absolutely. I would have silver spoon in my mouth either, okay? Old man worked three jobs. I know what a full scholarship is and what that means. I'm going to tell you this. It is not improbable that a general who met with a very promising young man from the inner cities with two guys from West Point is not going to say, but Charlie, we can I don't get think anybody is, con I don't think that's even the problem for Dr. Well, Carson. Problem? I think that the problem is this. It's, it's on page 57 of the book. Right. He does make the statement that he was offered a full scholarship. Well, they probably they, said they, they could get him in. And, well, and well, that's, they, but it's the language in. that's the issue. David, in the book, it didn't say he applied. Uh, he just said he was offered a scholarship after meeting with this general. Uh, you can interpret that any way you want. We started this conversation with the embellished. It's shifted now to maybe he lied in the book. Uh, after reading that ad, I, I would be inclined to think that some young kid uh, from Detroit thought yeah, that he was offered a full scholarship if indeed this is his account. Yeah, you kind of understand that for a senior in high school to get that, a general, if he met with him and said that. Let me tell you this. I, what this tells me is these candidates that have never run for office before are now getting, you know, the equivalent of a full body scan <laughs> when they're trying to run for the highest office in the land. One of the reasons the candidates who've been senators or governors have an advantage is they've been through this and right, their right. records have been vetted like Marco Rubio all of the things that came up about his charge card he knew about from his earlier races he knew what he was going to say mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Carson was caught a little flat-footed I think in his answer and you know Donald Trump is, embellishes every day and someday somebody but, he's but like a know, walking up from research we're, file. Think about what we're arguing here we're arguing whether this guy when he was sitting as a 17 year old kid uh, you know, with, with a general and two and, and two people from West Point, whether or not he was offered a scholarship by them, when it is undeniably clear that if he actually met with General Westmoreland and two people from West Point, they would have knocked over. They would. They would have tear down walls to get this guy. There's no doubt about this. that, Charlie. No doubt. Yeah, that, 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 I'm to make this one now. point. The one point is this: if he did not meet with Westmoreland. <laughs> And there's some questions of whether he did, if he, if he really did. If he did not, well, then I reverse, and I tell you, he's got a big-time credibility Katrina, problem. Katrina, uh, Donald Trump immediately tweeted arguing. out that he lied and that uh, insinuated there were more lies to follow. Was that a too quick of a reaction by Donald Trump? Well, no, because we're only talking about this today, Charles, is because of the CNN investigation. We're leaving that part out. It's not a matter of fact of whether he I did or did not meet with the general. That's just one piece. That's one piece of it. What we're talking about is stemming from a lot of inconsistencies that Dr. Carson himself have put out there. His stories have changed, and he's been called on it. That's why we're talking about this right Did now. Did you read well. the CNN? Charles, Charles, I the CNN. Uh, David, guys, Charles, I would Charlie, tell you, Charlie, Charlie, let David Charles. in for a second. Yeah. David, let, go me, ahead. let me say a word here. Uh, Katrina should know. I mean, Donald Trump's the expert at inconsistencies and yeah. in everything he says. So it's kind of like the pot calling the kettle names here. It, it's amazing to me that he'd be saying anything about this. By the way, there are a lot of this. other presidential candidates who are going to weigh in on this. One that weighed in immediately because he happened to be on the show on our network, a uh, fellow Republican presidential candidate, Jeb Bush, and he defended uh, Ben Carson. In fact, this is what he had to say to Neil Cavuto just a little bit earlier. I believe him to be true. So 
I'm not going to speculate about this. I admire the guy a lot. So would you be surprised if it turns out this story was true? Yeah, I'd be very surprised because I just believe he's a person of integrity and, and I admire him. I trust him. I believe it. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't trust Politico. If it's between Politico and Ben Carson, put me on the Ben Carson call, please. Gina, Donald Trump had issues with uh, Politico earlier in the campaign as well. Uh, I, be, from your own experience, knowing the media, understanding their dislike for most of these GOP candidates, the knee-jerk reaction would be to, to trust Politico this time, but not when they went after Donald Trump? Well, it's not always a response by Donald Trump. It's a reaction. And when this kind of thing came out, there were inconsistencies, just like Megyn Kelly pointed out last night on her show. And yeah, Mr. McIntosh would know about inconsistencies because he's endorsing people that support eminent domain. Okay, Katrina, let's talk about the Trump, uh, uh, excuse me, the Megyn Kelly appearance. You're exactly right. I think that mm -hmm. she, she held him to the fire on that. But I think Jeb Bush's, you know, response was exactly what Carson was banking on, that the American people right. would ultimately feel that he's still believable despite I, if you want to call it a lie, or a misunderstanding, a misspeaking, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're going to ultimately still believe Listen, in the trustworthiness I'm gonna, I'm gonna, of Ben Carson. That is what he is banking I on. And David makes a good point. Charlie, talking. you've talked a lot. Let me get one more point in. David made a good point. He doesn't have a political record to run on. Ben Carson does not. All he's got is a narrative. He's got a story. So I think it's fair that people are going to cherry pick that apart to find any inconsistencies right. or any loopholes. Has anybody read the CNN Absolutely account? Right. I mean, do you ever read that CNN story? What they were saying, essentially, what CNN was casting uh, aspersions about was whether Ben Carson had a fight with some kid when he was 12, whether he had an anger problem when he was 13, and whether, you know, he smacked his mother when he was 14. That's, That's what comes what they, with front-runner no, no, status, what I'm Charlie. Saying, it's, pick, it's called picayune. It's nothing. <laughs> it's you what happens. That will, that I don't story, think it's going to hurt him, that story but it's going to happen. Hurt him. It will hurt him. I agree. The only thing that will hurt him is if he's, in, if he's caught in an outright hey, Charlie, lie. I'm not mad at Carson. Dave, David cool. McIntosh, I want to go to you on this <laughs> and just ask, sure. how long will it take us to know just how much damage this has had uh, on Ben Carson's uh, uh, campaign? Or, or i got to be honest with you, on my timeline on Twitter, 90% maybe more came to his defense uh, when this was when this came out yeah. even people who had like Ted Cruz for president and Trump for president they all felt that this was a little bit too much from the mainstream media I, I think this will will fade away and if there's a if it's one of a series it'll start to be a problem for him if it's you know just some episodes in his life he'll have to explain them and he'll probably have a story that explains them it's kind of that season right now where people are not paying that much attention so little things like this are going to blow up and it's good for the candidates to have it happen now I, but Katrina here's the thing <laughs> Uh, uh, right now, to everyone's point, Ben Carson is riding this amazing wave of trust, this amazing wave of being anti-establishment, and this amazing wave of people being, you know, liking him uh, for his religious belief, for his, his down homeliness, you know, just all of these things that sort of hark back to a yesteryear for America. There's no doubt if that diminishes, his campaign probably would be over. Well, that's true. But, you know, like Ebony was saying, this is his platform. So if he can't defend this, then he is in trouble. And you do want it to happen right now because the Clinton machine, they're going to go back even further if they can. Oh, she's right about Boy, that. So they'll go to the end. Yeah, she's right about, about that. <laughs> go ahead, uh, Ebony. Yeah, so here's the thing. We've got a saying in the law, Charles. There's what happened, and then there's what you can prove. Now, let's go to this CNN investigation right. about what happened. Here? It, it who's would be that, CNN. Does Carson have to prove no, it, or it would be CNN. They would have to prove that it didn't happen the way Dr. Carson is saying it, it did. And they didn't. And they didn't. I, Charles, you look, I'm not, you know, we ain't got no problem, Charlie. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not, we're not seeing each other face to face tonight. I know. I'm just messing but, with you, Charlie. But, you know, Charlie. Charles, the really thing, and we're going to find out about this sure. real soon. Yeah. Uh, whether he did meet with Miss Westmoreland, yeah. and I'm telling you, it, that will come out soon because, you know, there are still records, believe it or not, going back to 1969 about where West where Westmoreland went and didn't go, and you know he had AIDS with him if he right. went there, and and that'll come out. And if that and if the, he never met with, if he fabricated a meeting with a general of that stature. Then the thing gets really ugly. And I do want to also let everyone at home know, too, Politico themselves, uh, they changed their narrative on this as well. If you check their Twitter timeline as well, they have two separate headlines. One, uh, a lot more damning initially, uh, right. almost call them out as a liar. The other one, a little bit more journalistic, if you will. Let's leave it there. You guys are absolutely fantastic. I tell you what else is going to be fantastic. You don't want to miss it.
Fox Business' very own Republican debate. Make sure you tune in because the GOP hopefuls are going to take center stage. And you thought there were fireworks today. Wait till Wisconsin next week, less than a week away, in fact, the next Tuesday, November 10th, 7 and 9 p.m. right here on the Fox Business Network. And